Cummins, Duramax, and Power Stroke. The diesel truck has been around for going on 100 years now. Known for their reliability and power, these beasts are an amazing truck to own and drive. But which one is the most unreliable? And that's what we're going to be finding out in today's video, asking this diesel repair shop owner in Bryan, Texas, what is the most unreliable diesel truck that they see? Here are the four questions that we're going to be asking today to be answered for the most unreliable diesel truck. Number one is going to be what diesel truck comes in the most often. Two is going to be what year per brand is the worst. Three is what are the most common problems with these diesel trucks. Four is going to be what can be done to fix or prevent these problems from happening in the future. Before we get started, I got this video idea from Truck Masters. He's a great channel. I love his channel a lot. So if you guys want to subscribe to him, I'll leave his link down in the description down below. We are in a completely different state than him. So it is a completely different opinion and a completely different answers. So without further ado, let's jump into what is the most unreliable diesel truck. We're outside of Asher Automotive today and we are going to be talking about what is the most unreliable diesel truck. We've got the owner and the manager of Asher Automotive out here and they're going to be telling you guys what kind of truck they see the most of in the shop here and then also breaking down some of the problems for you guys. So this is Brian and this is Paul. They're going to be talking about everything. Yeah, let's jump into it. What's the truck that you see the most often in the shop? The truck that we see in the shop most often is going to be the Ford but I do believe that's because of most of our clients around here, old field guys and whatnot, they all have Ford fleet trucks so there's a reason for that. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's because they're the most unreliable. Yeah. What's the second that you would you see the most of in here? I think we'll go with Dodge on that. Uh, so it's it's Ford, then you have the Dodges, then you have the Chevys. Yes. What is like the most common problem that you see with those? Well, on the Fords, the uh, front ends a lot. They have the high pressure fuel system has gave way. We do quite a few fuel systems. Yeah. So that's CP4 failure, right? For yeah. like kind of summed down a little yes. bit. Yeah. That's why I, I, I preach maintenance a yeah. lot with any vehicle, it, it, all the diesels. Y'all guys sell fuel additive here. What What's that called, that fuel additive called? Uh, BG Fuel Products is what we use. Okay. Uh, there's the, the lubricity called DFC, well, diesel fuel conditioner for the CP4 pumps, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like okay. I was telling you earlier, the, the CP4, you know, it has that bucket that rides on there. So well, there's nothing to hold that position, the, the bucket, get dry, it will twist that and cause it to go down and fail. So yeah, so that, that basically will shave down the metal and push it into the Once pump. You, if you get one in and you pull the regulator out and you've got metal shavings, it's done. It, it yeah, needs a fuel system. That, what, what, what truck, all the trucks have that kind of pump on there, but what do you see like is the most common truck in here with that problem? Fords um, or? We probably do see probably the most, like I said, Fords with that, but it's a Bosch system, same as Chevy. They're actually the same fuel system. They're Bosch. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's mainly Fords and then like Chevys and then Dodges. Chevy stuff we get seems to be, uh, I have a whole lot of fuel filter housing cracks. Yeah. So a little small fuel issues, but uh, they have some uh, electrical issues that we deal with a lot, gotcha. injectors and whatnot. They just, yeah. the electronics on it seem to mess up a lot. So I own a diesel truck and I know a lot of you guys watching own a diesel truck. And Paul here is the manager and sees the everyday operations of the shop. Paul, what do you recommend people do online that already have these problems like the CP4 failure, a lot of the other things? What do you recommend they do to fix it or even prevent it? So maintenance is key on any of these vehicles. The lubricity, the BG additive that we told you about, start it early and keep doing it. All these systems are bound to fail over time. It's a matter of when, but you can help create longevity in these things, make them last longer just by doing the pure maintenance on them. And I know you had mentioned to me before we actually filmed the video that leaving these newer diesel trucks at idle is actually a bad thing for them. And a lot of people think that it's a good thing, but especially with the ones that still have the modern emissions equipment on it, the leaving it at idle is a bad thing and why why is that so basically when you're leaving a vehicle the newer ones that have the uh the def systems in them if you leave them at idle for too long the uh soot will build up in the diesel particulate filter it's basically the catalytic converter for the, the diesel yeah. system and it won't allow the vehicle to do a proper regen to clear out that soot you have to be at speed for a significant amount of time for the vehicle to engage itself in the regeneration process if you're sitting at idle in the middle of a, an oil field or whatever for hours and hours and hours that's never going to happen for yeah. it. For a lot of people out there that are thinking about what maintenance to do how how often should they change like their oil their fuel filters their oil filters at... so we recommend 5,000 miles okay. on most of these vehicles since we also sell bg products we offer another oil additive it cleans the gunk and the film and all of the the residual left behind by old oil and things like that we recommend doing it either every or every other oil change basically it's just an additive we pour into the crankcase, let the vehicle run, circulate for a half an hour, 45 minutes, and then dump it and do an oil change. So I know Brian had mentioned the brand of truck that comes in here the most often. What year per brand do you 
you see the most often of? So like what year in the Fords do you see the worst problems with yeah, those? Yeah, so the, most of the Fords we see are probably from 2011 up to say 2018 in that range. The biggest reason for that is because the newer ones are still under some sort of warranty. They're still going to the dealership yeah. for free services and things like that. Once they get out of warranty, they're, they're, they're looking to get away from the dealership. Yeah. So they're coming to somebody like us that specializes in these types of vehicles. Yeah, yeah I would say from that range, as far as the Chevrolets go, probably the, the newer ones we see more the 15 to 18, 19 range. Why is that? The DEF systems in Got those trucks okay, are so just horrible. Bad, yeah. yeah, so the electronics and the DEF systems in the Chevrolets yeah. is pretty much one of the, the major things we see. Gotcha. In, in the Dodges, I would say it's probably a little older than that. I'm going to say it's probably from 2008 up to like 2016 in the gotcha. Dodges. The, the Dodges have a tendency just, you know, we see fewer of them than we do the Fords, but they have a tendency, the, the older ones have a tendency to last a lot longer than the newer trucks and that goes for Dodge, Chevy, Ford. They, they yeah. were built much better. But Say because the Dodge has the worst AC system uh, Absolutely. Period. That is a problem. Well, what is the most What is the most common problem with the AC system on, on the door? Uh, the the actual dash itself is horrible okay. in there, and the blend doors and actuators fail on them. Yeah. The doors will actually they're made of plastic, and they warp over time. This Texas heat just beats yeah. them up, and then they start sticking, and then they won't close, and so you don't get air volume, or you don't get air out of the right vent, yeah. things like that. So, so with the Dodge also knows they can look at their dash falling apart, and they know that yeah, <laughs> they that made is, cheap yeah, plastic. I guess. The mechanical parts in the Dodge are actually not horrible. Yeah. But all of the little miscellaneous pieces, interior pieces, Dodge just doesn't build those very well. Yeah. Do y'all, I know my channel's like, the staple is the 7.3. Do y'all see a whole lot of those in here? And if y'all do, what kind of problems do you see with those? Actually, the 7.3 is probably one of the more reliable yeah. ones. Yeah. That's, that's what I, everybody's heard. So y'all see a lot more like 6.0s, 6.4s in here? Yeah. The problems you see with the 7.3 are wearable items, like in fuel injectors gotcha. and things like that, that wear out over time. Yeah. A lot of maintenance on the 7.3s we see. Yeah. Just because, you know, people that have a 7.3 have done all the maintenance and they're continuing to do so. Yeah. That's why that truck... They probably all work on their own truck like myself too, so... Some of them do. Some of them don't want yeah. to do it anymore. Yeah. You know, some yeah. of them are my age and they don't want to work on their yeah. own vehicles, so yeah. they bring it to us to I get them. On 7.3s, other than valve cover gaskets, shorten out, they, uh, yep. they do pretty well. Yeah. yeah, like I said, it's things that, that are due to wear out on any vehicle, yeah. you know, gaskets injectors you know moving parts things like that those are going to wear out no matter what it is when you see that in a vehicle that's you know 20 23 years old and that's all you're finding on them yeah you know it just shows the ford reliability so for you said that you guys get a lot of death wobble in here is there any way at all that you can actually prevent that making sure that your all your front ends always tight your tires are balanced rotated that's what usually starts the yeah shenanigans. do you recommend putting a dual stabilizer on like first like before or you do anything it wouldn't hurt because that seems to be a huge benefit yeah. um, with with all of them personally i would probably yeah you know. well it would help a little bit with you we know, usually all the recommend it to everyone that comes in with a death wobble yeah. we may not do it in the beginning at first we may just do the track bar and things like that the things that that we really can see that have play we're usually always mentioning it to the customer that hey this might be a good idea yeah. and we give them a quote for it then and, and, then. and usually it's because they've already got some bigger tires stuff like that gotcha. that, that you know Know, the tires are bigger mud grips whatever usually the factory trucks they can go a long time and usually don't need it unless the front end parts get loose and yeah, i agree with him tires is the leading cause of death wobble gotcha it just is that, so you're saying kind of, upgraded tires or bigger tires are the biggest cause or people that don't take care of their tires yeah you gotcha. know they don't do the proper rotations they don't keep them at the right air pressures you gotcha. know they don't do all the things that they need to yeah. to keep those tires healthy yeah and when they do that they put miles on it put stress on everything else and suspensions like Dominoes. Once yeah. one thing falls, things are going to fall down the line. Yeah. So. A good thing to know is the more aggressive your tire is, the tread, the more you need to rotate it because yeah. they will get choppy. How often do you recommend rotating them? Every oil change. Yeah, every, oil oil change. every oil change. 5,000 miles. Mm -hmm. Wow. Change. Okay. It, you'll, you'll save a lot of problems that yeah. way. It's one of those things that you can never do too much of. Okay. It's one of those preventative things that it's better to do it too soon or, or more than should or more yeah. than the, the manufacturers tell you because it can't hurt. Yeah. It can only help you gotcha. to do that. Gotcha. Yeah, if you guys want to subscribe to the channel, you guys can. Uh, Asher Automotive is located out here in Bryan, Texas. I'll leave all their details down in the description down below. If you guys have any problems with your diesel truck, you guys can bring them in here and they will take care of you. Thanks again, Paul, for being on thank camera. You. And thanks again, Brian, for being on the channel. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.